Hi, in this video I'm going to be editing the images from my latest landscape photography vlog. Hi, I'm Adam and welcome to First Man Photography, the channel that will help you take your photography to the next level. If you haven't done so yet, please do subscribe to the channel where there's new videos going up every Wednesday and every Sunday. And moving forward, I'm going to be just documenting much more of what I'm doing as a photographer. That's going to include a vlog that I'm now hoping to put out every week. That's going to be the target at least. And then I'm going to do videos like this that focus on the editing of those pictures that I capture during those vlogs. And I'll also include details like camera settings and things like that in these videos. I know that's information that many of you want. I don't really want to include that in the vlogs because it can detract from the story of the day a little bit. And then I'm still, I'm going to also be doing a lot more reviews. So if you like the sound of that, please do subscribe, like I say. But without further ado, let's get into the computer and edit some of those images from the vlog at Hike Up Nick. If you haven't watched that yet, I'll put a link up there. Check that out first because it'll make this make more sense. Right, let's go. Okay, so here we are and these are the eight images, maybe seven, that I have chosen to edit from the images that I shot on the day. I shot a lot more images because I'm doing time lapse and I'm shooting about 200 images per time lapse, but these are the ones that I'm going to edit and we're going to look at. So a few of you have mentioned before that I edit quickly and yes, I do on the whole especially when I come across a set of images like this that I want to edit. Because I think if you do it quickly, without too much thought and nitpicking, you often get a much more natural feel that you're pulling from the artistic part of your head rather than analysing and overanalyzing. It's just it's a much more natural feel and often that is the best edit. I will sometimes go back into it later on to just tweak a few bits and pieces. It's good to look at it with fresh eyes again later. And, and again, also if I'm printing an image, I will go in and make sure that it's ready for print with profiles. Uh, if I'm blowing it up big, then sort of increase the resolution, that type of thing. But on the whole, when I'm editing this, it will be quick. So that's what I'm gonna do today. So this is the first Im image. So we're just gonna hit D to go in to the develop module. The settings I had for this one, it's with that wide angle 11 millimeter lens, ISO 100, I've gone for f4 and 1 200th of a second because I have handheld this image. Uh, I didn't want to mess about getting the tripod out, it's just a quick image to test that lens. So here we have the image. I wanted to go for that, use that really wide angle to my advantage and you shot this really interesting tree to get all these branches to form me part of the image with just a little bit of the landscape at the bottom here. So I'm happy with the image overall. The exposure is looking pretty decent to start with, but if we just zoom in a little bit, you can see that that lens has just a little bit of chromatic aberration. So let's start by getting rid of that, and we'll just go down to, we've got to have it in manual because there's no profile for this lens yet, but just use the defringe a little bit. I, go, I normally go to about four, if I'm doing it manually, and as you can see, very quickly, that gets rid of the chromatic aberration, which I've just never ever felt has been a problem. There is a little bit of red still in there that you can just slide that up to get rid of that. It's reduced it a little bit. Now it's not bothering me in the slightest, so I'm happy with that. Right, let's edit it up a little bit. I want to be able to see the detail in the tree. Uh, so I'm just going to bring the highlights down a little bit just to bring some of the detail in that sky out. Bring the shadows up just a touch so I can see more of the detail in the tree. I'll go a little bit over, then add some contrast in to about there. And then I'm going to just balance the whites until it hits true white and bring the blacks down just a touch. And then I want to increase the vibrance a little bit to get a bit more colour in that in the um, in the landscape area down at the bottom here i'm just going to increase the exposure just a tiny bit and that's really starting to come to life now i'm going to come down to the tone curve here i'll just see what our medium tone curve looks like and i'm pretty happy with that i'm just going to add a little bit of saturation as well to the image and then let's just see if we have the white balance right. I'll go a little bit 
more towards the warm side. That's not looking too bad. I'll just drag it back down a tiny bit and just leave it there. Let's just try increasing the shadows a tiny bit more just to bring out a little bit more detail and then add in the shadows and then that bark and then just add a tiny bit more contrast in towards the end and that isn't too far off. Let's just try dragging it down to the blue end to see what that looks like. Try and bring a bit of the colour out of the sky. Not, the was, not that there was much colour in the sky that day. Uh, but yeah, that doesn't really make a massive amount of difference. I think I like it around where I had it, which was about there. So that is about where I'm going to leave that image. It's it's interesting, that lens. Very interesting, that wide-angle perspective I get, you get on it. I'm quite pleased with this image. It isn't massively amazing or anything like that, but it's a decent uh, start to the day, and it's an interesting tree. And I think that lens is done well in capturing that so i'm excited about using that lens a little bit more but let's move on to the second image and this was the second image that i talked through in the vlog about the composition and how i would like in the summer the sun will set somewhere in the background here it may be a little bit close to this hill but with the sun setting there casting some nice light down onto this area here if some of those uh, that bracken is flowering and up here as well and then you've got the path leading you in this side, nice sunset colours in the sky, and I think that will make a good shot. As it is, it's not brilliant. I shot a long exposure just to try and increase, just to try and bring in a little bit of interest anyway. I am at ISO 100, I'm at 23 millimetres there, F16 to try and get that long exposure up as much as possible with the 10 stop filter I had on there, and that's allowed me to shoot an 80 second exposure still quite a long time but there was very very little wind at that point although it got very windy later you can see there's not that much movement in those clouds in the sky so first and foremost what i'm looking at is a horizon that's not straight so i'm going to hit the crop tool there by clicking r on the keyboard and just straighten that horizon up somewhat and i'm a little way off there to be fair to me I was stood on this bank, so it's warped my perspective a little bit at the time of shooting. I could have used the level on the Canon 5D Mark 4, but I didn't. I just went and shot it because I knew it wasn't going to be an overall keeper. I'm still editing it now because I want to include it in the vlog, which you will have seen by now. Uh, and I also may share it on social media because it's still, it doesn't hurt just to have images to share now and again. and to, I can share the story of what I'm talking about as well with not, of sort of just being the, the story of the vlog which is that I'm going out scouting a location. So let's get into the edit here. I'm going to start by removing some of this vignette that the um, 17 to 40 millimeter lens has added in to this image. So we'll scroll down to the, where are we? Scroll down to here, click the profile back on I don't need to remove the chromatic operation on this one. I don't want to remove any distortion either because I quite like that. But just remove a little bit of that vignette which has been intensified by that 10 stop filter. So there we go. That'll do. And then I'm going to start by my exposure again. Not too bad. I'm going to increase the shadows a little bit just to bring out some more detail in the foreground. And then just bring the highlights down a touch because I'm going to use a software ending grad in a minute. And that is what I shall do next. So I brought the shadows up. I'm now going to bring the sky down a bit in exposure, just to try and bring out a bit more detail in those clouds. So bring in your filter like that, and then just drag, just reset that, and drag the exposure down just a touch, not too far, probably about one stop. Drag the highlights down a little bit as well, and then I might just see if the colour adjusts on there. No, that don't think I need to adjust that much. So I'll just leave it as it is there. Maybe add a touch of yellowing, actually. Such a warmth in there. And just undo that. I'm going to bring those shadows in the foreground down a touch so it doesn't look overexposed on the ground. And you start to get that HDR look. If the ground is brighter than the sky, it starts to give you that sort of unpleasant HDR look. So I'm drag my whites up, so I've got true white in the image till it peaks at the end at the top there. You see that goes to a colour when the you've got true white in the image. And I'm just doing drag drag the blacks down a little bit, and then add the all important contrast to give 
the image that punch that I like in my images. So up to about 36 there. Let's have a look at the tone curve as well. And that is looking okay there. And let's add a bit of vibrance and a bit of saturation just to add as much interest as possible to this image because it isn't perfect, like I said, but I'm happy, I'm happy with the composition and it will transform it in the summer if you've got the sun setting in the sky, like I said, and you've got a big sunset shot, it will be a totally different image. But as for now, I will leave it at that. I'm happy with the composition, like I said, but let's move on to the next one. And this is another image shot with that 11 millimeter wide angle lens. And I'm, I'm happy with the composition on this one, really happy. I think this could be a really great image when it's being shot in the summer. So... As you could see in the video, I was very, very close to these rocks. With that crazy 11 millimeter wide angle on that full frame camera, you get a very wide perspective. And the good thing about this lens is it keeps the horizon fairly straight. You're not getting distortion across the middle of the image. You are getting distortion in the bottom here, but I don't think it matters too much for in this image. And I still like the perspective that that's giving. Getting all these rocks in, you've got this hill in the background. Like I said in the vlog, in the summer, in the morning, this will be a beautiful sunrise if the conditions are right. The sun will rise somewhere around here, according to the Photo Pills app that I use for planning my shots. And if that, if the sun rose there, beautiful colours in the sky, sunlight shining down on these rocks, putting some nice golden light onto these rocks, and I think you've got a great image there. I'm happy with the composition though, like on the last one. So let's go through an edit on this one. So firstly, I am going to remove a little bit of that natural vignette that's occurred. So let's go back to manual and remove some of that vignette a bit uh, about there. And then let's remove some of the shadows from that foreground and that's immediately improved that image. So same again as the last one, let's bring in a software ND grad because I don't like using the real ones. Uh, especially with this Canon 5D Mark IV and its huge dynamic range. But let's go to there and again reset that and bring down the exposure a touch. In the vlog, I said, I'm just going to go for about one again on that one. In the vlog, I said that this would probably work as a moody black and white. Now seeing it, I'm not sure that it will. Let's add a bit of contrast in though and have a look. Uh, go black and white and... No, you see, I don't think that works because it all it's almost you lose a bit of definition around this area, and it feels like this hill blends into this hill here, which it doesn't. And I think that's that that is more clear in the color image because you can see the difference in the greens between this area here. You can see that wall much easier as well in color, and it turns into a different shade here because it's behind the uh, high cup nick itself. So I actually prefer that image in colour and I knew the second I saw it on the computer that that would be the case. So one thing I didn't notice when I was shooting this was this pile of sheep poo. So not ideal for the image. Uh, I could have easily kicked that out of the scene but I didn't notice it at the time. But when I'm shooting this in the summer with the sunrise that hopefully won't be there and there won't have been a, a recent visit from some sheep. So let's continue through our edit. Let's just bring the highlights down a little bit, bring in some true white again, up to there. Drag the blacks down a little bit as well. Add a bit more contrast in. Let's try a medium tone curve. Let the computer catch up because I'm screen capturing as well. And then I wanna add in a little bit of vibrance, a little bit of saturation. And also I'm going to add in about five clarity just to bring out the detail in those rocks. I'm just going to pull the uh, contrast down a little bit as well. Let's go back to linear, see what that looks like. And I actually prefer that with no tone curve at all. So that's not far off. Let's see if I can warm it up a little bit and just bring the greens down a touch. I'll add a little bit of uh, magenta in anyway. No, I don't like that. I'm going to go back on that. Undo the tint. Let's see what it looks like. It's slightly bluer. I actually prefer that. So let's pull it down on the temperature slider just a little bit and that's starting to look as good about as good as i think that image will get for now 
So I'm going to leave it there. Let's move on to the next one. I'm re I do really like the composition and what the 11 millimeter lens has offered me on that one. Let's just wait. I will return that. I'll return there in the summer and pick up that spot on sunrise shot. So there we go. Scouting works. Hopefully that shows an example why. Let's move on to the next one anyway. And this happened after the weather moved in. Um, I was just sort of marching to the top of High Cut Nick, went past this waterfall, and I shot this image again with that 11mm wide angle lens. So I was very, very close to this waterfall. It is rather large. These are some big rocks. I didn't film it. I didn't, I didn't think it was adding anything to the story of the day, and I've talked enough about waterfalls recently. So I just shot the image and moved on quickly. So it's actually not too bad straight out the camera. I'm going to just go straight in and add some white to it. I like the way as the weather's closed in, you can see the mist towards the top of the waterfall here. Let's increase the shadows to bring the detail out the bottom of the waterfall there. Add in some contrast. Add in a touch of yellow just to bring those natural yellows, or a bit of warmth, just to bring those natural warm colours out of the grass. And I'm just going to add in a tiny bit of vibrance, a tiny bit of saturation. Let's just scroll down to remove a little bit of that vignette as well. That's not far off. And do we want to bring the highlights down a touch? Maybe a little uh, to about there. And that's not looking too bad at all. I don't think for now I need to do anything more with that image. It isn't the most spectacular image in the world, but I do like it as far as waterfall shots go. And like I've said before, they are not my favourite images. But anyway, let's move on to the next one. And this is, I think, at the moment, my favourite image of the day. As the weather moved in, it kind of created this look. As I walked past this scene, it just sort of, this composition struck me straight away. And this wouldn't have been a good shot had it not been for that bad weather, because you'd start to see the details in the background here. I really like this shot. So let's have a look and see if we can enhance some of the details in this color. And this, I felt at the time even, that it has black and white written all over it. So let's go for this. And I want to just start by bringing in that true white because I've underexposed a little bit on purpose on this one and bring in the uh, whites back in. So let's drag the blacks down as well, down to about there. Increase some contrast because I know I'm going black and white. Increase the shadows just a touch. Sometimes I will edit like this where I know it's going black and white, but I'll start by editing in colour first. It's at this point, though, that I am going to go to black and white. There's not really a particular reason for that. I just like to try and see what it does look like as a colour image as well. But I know, I definitely know, I want this to be black and white, so I'm going to switch over to black and white now. So usually I just use the auto black and white settings that Lightroom provides. You can go down and uh, change the colour, the each tone yourself. But the auto, to be fair, does a pretty good job on most occasions. So I want to bring the shadows up just a touch more, just to bring a bit of detail out of the rocks here and here and this rock here. And I'm going to then crank the contrast, which is what I like to do when I go back and white. As much You can add loads of contrast when you go back and white, much more so than you can in colour, and it will still look great. And immediately, as soon as I've hit that strong contrast tone curve down here, I think it's just enhanced that image so much. I'm also going to add more contrast with the clarity slider here just to enhance that effect even more. So I don't actually think we're far away there. I do want to remove a little bit of the vignette from the image. This was, again, shot with... What did I shoot this with? I think this was with the Tamron 24-70, and I'm at 27 millimeters f5.6, 1 100th one of a second, and this one is handheld as well. So we're going to go to profile on this one, enable profile corrections. For some reason, Lightroom always thinks it's a Sigma when it is not. I haven't got an early view of that Sigma lens yet. Let's go to Tamron, and then I want to reduce the distortion because I don't want any distortion correction, and it's done a pretty good job on the vignette there. I might just add a tiny little bit back in of that natural vignette. And that is looking pretty good. I'm just going to add a little bit more contrast. And again, I love the contrast in the black and white images. I really do. And you can br just drag that 
shadow down a little bit. Uh, actually, pretty. I'm pretty happy with where it is, to be fair. Bring the blacks back up a little bit. And I think that is about there. I'm happy with that image. I like that image. It's an image I would not have captured unless I'd been out that day when I knew the weather wasn't going to be great. But overall, I'm pretty pleased with that image. So let's move on to the next one. And in the vlog, you see I get to the top. I haven't got 360 degree views when I'm at the top. So I had to, like I said in the vlog, get down the mountain. And if we look at this last image, not that one, that's a selfie. If we look at the last image, this here is the hill that I had to walk down. And that image that we're about to edit now is shot from about this area here. These rocks were massive, big boulders that I had to scramble my way down. Um, so that's where I have shot that image from, looking down the valley that way. I am, again, using that 11mm lens. I'm at f4. When you're that wide, you get everything in focus roughly anyway. So you don't have to go too low down on your uh, aperture. So that's why I've stuck at f4. I am also hand-holding again here. Am I? I can't remember. It was very wet. It was very windy at this point, uh, and it was hard work climbing down there. But it's 160, 1 160th of a second, and this is a manual focus lens, so I'm using live view to get my focus right. I probably should have stopped down a little bit because you can see that's just slightly out of focus, and we've got some of that red chromatic aberration as well again. So I'm going to remove that first by coming down to here. I need to be in manual because there's no profile for that yet. And just remove some of that chromatic aberration. Just increase the red a little bit. And that should have got rid of it. Let's have a look. Yep, that has done a half decent job of getting rid of it. Again, I think I'm going to go back and white on this one. So I'm not too bothered about that chromatic aberration anyway. I think it worked. You get these moody shots like this. I think it, it's, it will work better in black and white. But let's try it. Uh, as a colour image first. I'm just going to increase the exposure a little bit to about there. I was probably about a stop off on this one. And then increase the contrast because I love contrast in my images. And then bring up the shadows to bring a bit more detail out this foreground here with these rocks. And I quite like the distortion caused on these rocks here by that 11mm lens. I think it works pretty well on this image with this with these rocks in the foreground. So let's bring the whites up to true white there and just leave the blacks around where they are really. Add in a little bit of vibrance, a little bit of saturation and let's see what it looks like on a medium uh, contrast tone curve. And that's not a bad image. Let's just remove a tiny bit of that green with the addition of a little magenta and that's not far off. I'm going to just going to reduce the saturation and the vibrance a little bit because I don't like seeing too much green in these rocks. They were very covered in moss and lichen. Some very impressive lichen, actually. But they were covered in that. It made it very slippy, very difficult to get down. But I'm not particularly liking the green in those rocks anyway. Uh, let's try it now on black and white. Switch over. And I immediately like that better in black and white. I am now just going to go down and remove some of the vignette that has been added to the image by that lens and get to about there. I'm going to then bring the shadows up just a little bit more, increase the contrast because I've gone black and white, and then I want to bring that sky down just a little bit. So I'm going to use a ND grad just to about there because I don't want these cliffs here going into too much darkness. I'm going to leave the shadows up on that one so the cliffs uh, are corrected back again. But let's bring the exposure down a little bit. See if we can get any detail out of that sky. And the image wasn't overexposed to start with, so the detail will be there. The camera will have captured the detail in that sky if it's there. So let's bring it down. And it's sort of just... It's a, it's a very grey, very uh, overcast image. Like I said on, in the video, there'll be that lid of cloud over the top of that image, which there is. And it's still, you can see some mist in the distance here. So there isn't any real definition in that cloud. But I do like what the ND grad has done there. Almost brought, brought in a little vignette in to the image. I'm just going to drag it up a little bit like that. Increase the shadows a bit more to try and bring out a bit more detail out of these cliffs. I don't want to lose them into shadow completely. And then just switch off the ND grad. 
and that is looking pretty good to me. I actually quite like this image. I had seen a lot of images shot from the top during my research on this location, and it isn't the easiest place to compose a shot, but I think with the cloud and that mist, it's added some drama to the image that I wouldn't have otherwise had. So I am quite pleased with that image. I'm just going to add a little bit of clarity as well, just to see what that does. Try and bring a bit of definition out of those rocks. And I think that's working pretty well as well. So I'm going to leave it there. Let's just correct those whites one last time there. And I'm pleased with that image. I'm going to leave it there. I might go back and tweak a couple of bits. Like I said, I do sometimes. But for now, I'm pretty pleased with that. So let's move on to the next one, which is a selfie for the cover of the video. So I shot this with the 700D. It was probably at this point that I killed the 700D because it was pretty much torrential rain at the time. The 700D survived the mud, but it did not survive the rain. It is now broken and not working. Hopefully, by the time this video comes out, the camera will have dried and will start working again. I've had some luck with that before, so I'm hoping that will happen again. Right, I... A selfie is not wrong every now and again. I think, especially if you've got your Instagram feed, letting seeing what the photographer looks like, I think I certainly like that when I'm looking at other people's work. I like to know what they look like now and again, so there's nothing wrong with the odd selfie. And pictures with people's faces in seems to work better as a thumbnail on YouTube. So that is what I've done. Anyway, let's just quickly edit this. What also works well on a uh, YouTube video is lots of saturation. So I'm not going to go into too much effort with this one. I'm just going to bump the saturation right up and then add a little bit of warmth in there. And that will pretty much do. I think I like the, I think it'll work well as the cover for the video. If I put a little bit of text up here, I don't like it as a medium tone curve. So let's just leave it a linear add, increase the shadows a little bit. And I'm happy with that. Don't need to go into that in any more detail. Just a, a quick selfie for the front cover of the vlog. And let's move on to the last one. I don't think, having seen this again, I'm going to edit this one because I only just shot it just to be able to show you, as an example, the view I had when I turned around, coming back down to show you where I'd come down from. Because of that torrential rain, it was coming, the way the camera's looking now, it's coming straight into the camera. So it was behind me as I was... Rain was here in my back as I was descending down that hill. And as you can see, there's rain spots all over the lens, which has killed that image. There isn't really a great composition from that location anywhere. It might work in, as a sunrise or a sunset. Certainly that's, that's looking almost due north. So you'd never have the sun in, in it. But you might if you had 360 degrees of colour in a sunrise or sunset, then it may work. But I don't think... I'll be going back just to get that shot. Uh, that composition isn't really any... It's difficult to get a composition from down in the valley, but still, I wanted to show you that, uh, but I'm not going to edit it. So let's have a look at the images overall again. And yeah, I'm, I'm happy with what that's created. It's an interesting abstract sort of image of the tree. These two here will work brilliantly, I think, with a sun, sunrise, a sunset in this case, sunrise on this one. I think they're going to work nicely if I get some colour in, in that sky and stuff. That one, I'm happy with it as a, another waterfall image for the portfolio. This one, I'm really pleased with. I like the look of that one. That one, I am relatively pleased with as well. I think it's a decent black and white image that a lot of people are going to like. Nice little selfie. That one, that I'm not editing. And I'm happy with the haul. As a scouting mission goes, I'm pretty pleased with what I've come back with there, especially given the weather and the fact that one of my cameras has died. So... Um, by the way, when I had the, in this shot, that, that 5D Mark IV was sat in the rain for a long time, taking that time lapse that you'll hopefully see towards the end of the video. You will have seen towards the end of the video. Do watch the video if you've not seen it yet. I'm, I, I think it's a good one. Um, but that 5D Mark IV sat in that rain for ages and was totally, totally unaffected. Very well weather sealed. Great camera. Can't complain one bit. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. Please give the video the thumbs up if you did. If you've picked some tips up along the way, let me know down in the comments. If you think I could be doing something better, let me know because we're all always learning and I'm quite, I really, really want to learn from you as much as you may learn from me. Okay, so I'll see you on another video very soon. I'm Adam. This 
is first man photography out. Just look at that view at the top of Skidar Mountain in the Lake District.